so dorky. <laughs> We're all nerds, I guess, whatever. So sending you the love. And um, just continuing the reading, I might as well do something very, very, very constructive. Hold on a second, where am I looking? I'm looking at this thing here, and that's not right. My eyeline should be here. <sighs> okay, um, so I'm reading to you, uh, Dance Warrior from Cancer to Dancer. And last we left off, it was chapter five. So we're gonna continue, oh, hello, continue on with chapter six. Right here, right? I'm on six. Yeah. Okay, so after this chapter, whoa, after this chapter we will be halfway done. Hold on, hold on. Ah, I'm flashing this picture again. For those of you who don't think I have ballet technique, eh, eat it, look how well turned down I am. The back leg is more important than the front leg, I'm told. So see, look at that. It points beautifully. <coughs> yeah, it's pretty good. That's me. Okay, ow! So, so I'm gonna get to reading this really, really soon, but before we do that, that's over here. Now, just to clarify, um, this book is not about my being abused by my grandfather. His name was Frank, not Glenn. Glenn was my father. Glenn never did anything nasty like that to me. And he never did anything nasty like that to my son. And they were never even around each other when they were little because he's on the East Coast. Now, we seem to have this fake person who's going around taking out credit and saying that they live with us, be, pretending to be my daughter. I don't have a daughter. I would know. Uh, you can look at our tax returns and everything like that and they've never been a dependent of ours and just, just no. And what else? Um, and we are also concerned that there are two versions of this book out there, uh, all on Amazon. It was first Create Space, but one version, when we order it, we get what we actually published. And we're kind of concerned, not accusing falsely, but we just heard through the grapevine that there may be a, a second version. In other words, Amazon or Create Space or whoever, somebody, somehow, I don't know how that would work. Uh, would appreciate the clarification and help Amazon and Jeff Bezos. I, no more reaching out as friends, okay? We already wrote you a letter, so you gotta help us here. Um, so yeah, one version that we receive when we order it, so we think, oh wow, everything's fine. Um, and then another version that you all get. And I'm not getting any residuals or anything, so I'm just concerned that this fake Noel Kale yeah, Kale is my married name, um, is going around making money off my books, which is in part fake stuff put in there to make it look like a, I don't know, a hot mess or a nasty thing. And as you can tell as I'm reading it, there's nothing nasty about my book. I kept a lot of things that could have been considered, you know, quote unquote nasty or questionable out because I didn't get people's permission. And while I'd be in my right to do that, I'm just not that kind of a person. So my first draft, like any author's first draft, you put everything in there you possibly can think of. That's the emotional artist, right? You get that out. And then you write the book that is appropriate for public. You know, it doesn't mean that because I wrote something one way, and even that, that draft of the <laughs> It just had certain things in it, like, you know, uh, transcripts of, like, word for word conversations or emails or something. It's like, wait, I didn't get permission to do this. I don't even want to do that right now because, you know, it's complicated right now. But Or at the time when I wrote the book. So I even say in the book, this is going to be left blank and more come out later on. So here's the thing. Uh, we need to clarify.
clarify this and straighten this out just in case there is some kind of funny business going on. Hey, if not, then everything's fine and no one has anything to worry about, but there is. Of course we all have something to worry about. And the question has to be asked, why? Well, it looks like from what we found out via, because we're trying to get a vehicle and get, you know, uh, credit checks and all this stuff, that someone is pretending to be our daughter, uh, is a big fat liar, and I don't know if they're fat or skinny, I just, you know, that's just a term people use, <laughs> and, and a fraud, and, you know, imposturing, and, uh, we're pressing criminal charges because this is not okay. And then next, if they're pretending to be, uh, because we found two things, one is a daughter, a fake daughter, and the other one is a younger version of me married to my husband. Chris, you would know that that was fraud, right? If someone came up to you and pretended to be your wife and said, no, I'm 29, don't you remember, right? Yeah. Okay. See, so you guys, I don't know what anybody's trying to pull here, but it ain't gonna work on him. I mean, yeah, sometimes he acts like he's brain dead and he forgets things and stuff like that. <laughs> but what, what? I, I'm just clarifying. Okay. I'm saying good things. But, <laughs> but he ain't that brain dead, okay? So, no, you are not gonna be able to do some weird voodoo thing and convince him that he's married to a 29 year old. Hey, I might look 29, but that's a big difference. You know, hey, I do a lot of work. <laughs> Try to keep myself healthy. But, hey, um, it, it's not true. So, I think that this group, you know how I call them the corporation, whatever, uh, organized crime, Q is what everyone seems to be calling these people. So, um, I think we were talking about it earlier. You may have heard it if you guys have, uh, access to our private conversations that um, they wanted to set it up so if something happens to me and I die, they could try to do the, the older than Jared daughter thing or the oh no, he's married to somebody else thing, but they're both fakes, they're frauds there is no other no L kale how do I know this? because we know all the kales in the kale clan and it's very small very, 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 very small. Um, and B, before I got married, I looked and I do periodic searches and we look to make sure that nobody's doing something like that. So somebody tried to hide it this last time because I guess y'all bad guys knew that we were doing that. And you tried to hide it. And we had our landlord asking us about four years ago, do you have somebody else living with you? But no. You know our son, we've been there 15 years. He's like, hmm. So he knew something was funny, but you know, maybe he can't say everything. Because maybe these people are being nasty to him and holding a sword of Damocles over his head too. If that's the case, our landlord needs to be our friend and jump on our side on our boat so we can help him too. Like I said, you all need to sell out the guy on top. You know the pyramid with the all-seeing eye on the dollar? That's kind of an analogy. And that would be really a hoot if it was actually precisely right on. I don't know. We'll find out, I guess. So, uh, guys, please be careful and just know that, no, my father Glenn did not rape me or our fake daughter because I don't have a, a daughter, number one. It is a fraud. No, my father Glenn didn't even rape our son because they were never around each other. <laughs> like at all, because he was on the East Coast, we were on the West Coast, and the first time he met our son, he was, first time I was pregnant with my son, and obviously nothing happened there, and then the next time, you were what, eight or nine? Something like that, the first time you met him? Yeah, so I mean, it's like, it, that doesn't work, and uh, yeah, <laughs> guys, come on. And, uh, of course, you heard my husband just say, and kind of laugh at the fact that he would notice if a 29-year-old tried to slip in. And he would know if it was a fake, even if they looked a little like me, because there are certain things about my body that he knows, and there's just no other way. So you guys can forget about that. But we just thought we would cover all bases, just in case. And if we're wrong, we have one hell of a great book or a movie.
be coming out soon enough. So I see it's a win-win for us any way you look at it. Yeah, okay, with all that said, so, Noel Rose Anderson Gale. Let me clarify this again. Uh, I'm gonna start hyphenating Kale in all my books. I'll be able to go back and do all that. But why is it like this, okay? Uh, no, I'm not an alter ego of myself or something like that. It's called a pen name, it's called a performance name, it's called what you put your trademark and your businesses under. Um, it, it's just all a matter of legitimacy with money and all of that. Also, because I kind of had a feeling that there was somebody doing something really bad to me but not being able to put my finger on it all these years. We started using Anderson as my last name for performance. Why? Because I got a little bit further. They had a hard time tracking me down. And then when I started complaining about all this horrible intellectual property theft and invasion of privacy, how are they getting our conversations and putting them in articles and stuff like that, um, you know, they started saying, oh, that's her. Yeah. So, and Rose is my spiritual name when you do uh, Catholic, uh, what is it? Communion, confirmation, you have to pick a, a name. I think I went through with the whole thing. You know, the little ceremony. I, I'm a good Catholic person. I'm not mocking the religion. I just, that wasn't my thing. I latched on more to the Jewish religion, Christianity, you know, um, through my, uh, Christianity through uh, my husband and then um, the Jewish faith through my stepdad. So, just clarifying all this for you guys because uh, I think it's important. Yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna read my book. So, we are on chapter six. Life begins where fear ends. I dance my scars to show that you can, you too can heal. Though the oceans of long suffering are stormy, you sail on a ship of faith and your harbor is peace. There's more to that. I wrote that uh, for one of my pastor's wives years ago. Is that snow? I think so. Okay, uh, I danced my scars to show you that you can heal. No, I um, somebody once said, isn't that a, a typo? Did you leave the word with? Oh, you know, grammatically speaking. I said, no. I danced the scars that I was scarred with, in a sense. You know, the rape, the cancer, the betrayals. Normal human being stuff. And now we've got this real extreme stuff. Yeah, we'll get to dancing to that soon enough. There are some things worth fighting for. My son took this photo of me doing a uh, Paribus attitude derriere. Sorry, the brain is so slow today. Oh, I get it up much higher now. Okay, let's read. Many people live with and battle cancer for years. A breast cancer battle can can sometimes last 12 to 15 years. I've known some people that had it like that. But now that we know about this toxic dust being sprayed, I think that's your cancer. I think that's your diabetes. I think that's your everything, fill in the blank. And depending on how your body reacts and depending on the concoction that they dispense upon you and depending on what you know how to undo, that snow is beautiful, it's probably extremely toxic. Let me show that real quick. Excuse your hand. It's really beautiful. Look at it. Probably very toxic, like I said. So, um, yeah, I think that's where your cancer is coming from and all your diseases. Wouldn't that be a hoot? But it could be the reason it lasts so long is because the toxins keep getting sprayed into people's environments. Cancer doctor, she said, just leave. And then it really, uh, I went to the cancer clinic and it, I don't want to say it cleared right up, it took some time. But. Ah, okay. 12, 15 years with intermittent, intermittent lapses of remission. This can be seen in various cancers. It seemed that my road would be forever plagued with this disease making an appearance whenever it wanted. My Nana had 
already died from it. I came close to succumbing to it as well. I did not want this as my legacy. I was just beginning to live. I didn't want to die. My men folk at home were supportive and ready to jump into action. However, I decided to stave off the treatment until after the... How can I tell if this is focused? I'll just zoom it in and out like this. I'm sure one of those is gonna get it right. Yeah. Uh, during, what is this? Uh, after the show, I wasn't sure which treatment I would use, a prior one or try a new method. In the past, I used a combination of clinical traditional treatments with some medications and naturopathic means to treat the disease. It wasn't easy and I was very ill. It doesn't seem to matter which route you, you choose, you're going to feel horrid. You're fighting for your life. The path you choose to saving it doesn't matter. Do whatever it takes to save your life. Choose something that you feel good about, can afford, and get support for. Every time I had to choose, I had to consider these elements. My choice will differ from yours. I always say, my body, my choice. I know it's used for the abortion thing, but it can be used for pretty much anything. That's what I chose, though. I was mostly angry when I got the news. I didn't want to go through this again. It was hideous the first time. I also wanted to finish the dance concert. That, too, was my choice. How do I tell? Oops, there's a typo. My B-fly. It should be the B-fly. Do I tell her? I was pressured to inform her by the other students so she wouldn't worry, but if she didn't know, there would be nothing to worry about. They offered to tell her for me. I decided, no, I'll do it. Best come from me than from them. They were at least 10 to 15 years my junior, and while I loved them, who knows how and what they would say. I really didn't want to tell her, but they were probably right. It was the responsible thing to do in case she saw me not feeling well. You know. Oh, are we here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I might have to stop for a second. Nervously, I said to her, they found the lump. I don't think I can do this again. I don't want to talk about it pretty close anyway. Uh, she told me that she would then have the right to tell me whether or not I could continue choreographing dancing. And I said, no, don't do that to me. That will kill me. I really don't want to talk about it. And that, that was the truth. I mean, I didn't, I really didn't want to talk about it, but I didn't want her getting worried. And then I don't want these kids who might say something wrong and then there's another problem. And I'm like, oh shoot, I shouldn't have told anybody. But then, you know, when you're laying down on the mats and you're like, what's wrong? No, well, you're usually like, up and jumping around. I'm like, there's a reason I'm not being lazy. I'm not like, I'm trying to pull my weight. I'm just not feeling good. So I was in a rock and hard place. What else is new? I didn't mean for the definition of my words to sound so grave, but I knew I had to keep going and fighting. That was a bump. <laughs> if I quit cancer would win. I was going to end up in bed like I wasn't going to end up in bed like last time. She wanted me to take eight steps. I didn't have time for baby steps. Didn't she know that cancer could claim my life at any moment? Cancer takes people quickly. They can very easily, apparently. My entire life was lived carefully. I was not going to live cowering before cancer anymore. I was choosing to live my dreams fast and hard. I wanted to carry on with dancing. I knew I could dance through this if I had the support. I'm uncertain what she thought, but I wasn't asking her or pressuring her to help me. I was informing her of my situation so she wouldn't worry. However, even though I trusted her, looking back, this was a huge mistake. I should have kept it to myself completely. Since my husband and I decided to postpone the actual treatment for a short time, we decided to strengthen my immune system first and do various cleanses. And the things I knew to do, the days were filled with struggle as my body was being prepared to receive another round of various treatments. It was already proving to be challenging, waking up in the morning, and... Da, da, da. So here's this page. And here's this last page. So that's pages 92 and 93. Seemingly impossible, right? Seemingly impossible to have. Challenging and waking up in the morning. And then seeming, and seemingly uh, poss impossible task. Most of my doctors were in another country which demanded careful coordination and planning. I was angry I had to do this again. 
convicted of, cri of a crime just for being alive. This is how I felt. I couldn't believe that I found myself here again repeating steps from the past. Familiarity caused some of it to be some of it to be easier with this reprise. reprise. My journal became filled with anger and frustration. Hmm. Okay, hold on a second. You know the way this is rendering everything? Yeah. It's making every everything seem very round. And my nose really wide. I don't have a wide nose. That, that's because it's close up right now instead oh. of further away. This is really something else, I'm telling you. Okay, let me see if I can fix this a little bit. Yeah, it doesn't really... Whatever. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just, like, sick of this spraying stuff. It makes my face fall anyway. You can see it in my younger pictures, too. My face is swollen. I was like, why is it? Because I was thin, and yet I had, not moon face completely, but it was definitely swollen. But look what's ahead. Look what's ahead. That is yeah. so funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, you gotta laugh at these things. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Anyway, God bless everybody. Even the bad guys at some times, you know, he's just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> what a crazy shit world we live in. Um, I had something to say, and I threw my own self off here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't know. Yeah, I was very, very angry. Okay. Most of my doctors were in another country which demanded careful coordination and planning. I was angry I had to do this again. Oh god, I was so angry. I was like, oh man. I get angry first and then I cry. It takes a lot to make me cry, really. If I'm crying, it must be pretty heady stuff. Um, but yeah, um, it was hard to coordinate everything. So be fly, see, that's what I meant by my doctors were not local. That's how you do it. And then I would send them my samples of things and uh, whatever I needed to get done here, we would send it there and it was a pain in the ass. Sometimes we drove down to San Diego and they met us halfway in a sense. But hold on a second, this is just not working why. Hold on guys. date on my head already. Okay. I have a hat for every occasion right now. And every color. <laughs> You'll understand that at the end of this and I'll explain it. But Anyway, guys, yeah, I was just not happy having to do that again. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I was so mad. I didn't want to do it again. Who wants to, you know? Not fun at all. Okay. So, convicted of a crime just for being alive, this is how I felt. I couldn't believe that I found myself here again repeating steps from the past. Familiarity caused some of it to be easier with this reprise. Reprise, my journal became filled with anger and frustration. I'm reading this over again. Why, why this again? What did I do wrong? I was just making strides in my rehabilitation. In the arc of my life, every time I began to get up and succeed at dancing, something pushed me down. I questioned God and am, am now embarrassed to admit that I had hate towards him. Oh boy. That's where I go first. The second really incredibly bad stuff happens. I go towards that hate. I'm like, ah. I can't, you know, it, I just want to be left alone, really. Oh, okay. I decided that I would not allow myself to end up in bed. If he wasn't going to help me, then I'd do it all on my own, in my own strength, with or without others' help. I did not care. I was not going to falter at the hand of this ruthless disease. I kept dancing. Some days were worse than others, where my body ached and was so stiff I couldn't bend my fingers. Yep. My kidneys weren't handling the influx of medication and supplements. I had rashes on my stomach and chest. This reaction burdened my heart valve as well. That's been remedied. Yes, you can heal yourself from mitral valve prolapse. And I did it. Um, it's written in medical journals and everything. 
it's really, it's not too hard. You just have to decide to do it and not give in or give up. Um, I tried to hide symptoms from the bee fly, but her sense of intuition and inquisitiveness was not easy to persuade otherwise. <laughs> she would know if I was feeling well or not. That girl, I'm telling you something, she has like a sixth and seventh and maybe eighth sense about her. Maybe it's just with me. I don't know. She's very perceptive and she can see things that maybe other people don't. It's like her gift. And it's like, wait a second, what? how do you see that? How do you, how do you, I mean, wow, incredible. You know, just eyes all over the place like a potato. She's not a potato, but <laughs> she's just an amazing person with this talent that she has. She's able to figure things out. It's like, Oh my God, this is my choreographic dilemma. What do I do? I just put myself into a corner here and she'd be like, do this, do this, do this. I mean, not that quickly, but pretty quick. And uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Hey, 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 did be I didn't know we were doing a food run. We weren't. I didn't get food for anybody. Can you get milk for me? No. Can you get some? Yeah. Yay. See, I have to go in anyway. Yeah, good. Okay. Oh, I live for the pee-pee jug. Thank yeah. you. Do you want me to keep that part in? Huh? Do you keep that part in? Definitely keep it in. Yeah, it's hilarious. Okay. Shows yeah. that we're not pompous asses. Like normal human beings. See, this is normally what my face should look like. Maybe not that thing because I have my mouth open. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, baby. But yeah, if there's a look-alike, there... I don't have a round face. I actually have a heart-shaped face, but... Okay, he's good. So, um, what was I saying? Yeah, that she, she would notice. I think she just had this... We have a, a connection or something. You all right? What happened? Oh. So, um, yeah, she just had this connection with me and um, I always was able, this is so cool, weird too, I could sense her. I can sense my family members, you know, if they come up from behind me or something like that. I can sense other people too. I can sense, let's put it this way, I can sense things. I feel their vibration. Everything has a frequency. Um, this book has a frequency. Light, colors, um, ev everything has a, I, I'm looking at all my stuff here to give you an example and it's not gonna work. But everything gives off something. These kinds of colors, you know, the neon colors of the 80s have extreme amounts of frequency. Um, they just, they vibrate. And we learned that in the cancer clinic, actually. Most of my treatment had to do with frequency and vibration. And remember all that that we learned, honey? Mm -hmm. About frequency and how you test for something. Because if you have a toxic element sample here, and you have your sample of your uh, DNA, saliva, hair, urine, something, blood, uh, you know, if you have a a white head, you know, developing. The, you can take these things and you can put them on a, a resonator in a sense and you put the sample of the toxin here and if you want to see if it's in your body, bodily parts and stuff like that, you put that sample here on the other plate and if they vibrate and harmonize together at the same frequency, then you've got a match and uh, most likely you have a problem too because you don't want that stuff in your body. And um, it's all very interesting, and I have it documented and all that too. And so does my uh, my mentor. So I learned a lot. I learned a lot about science, chemistry, and more than I did in school. But where I went to school, I learned a lot. They don't teach this stuff anymore. Gotta wonder why. Is that a cute thing? Make people stupid, like really stupid, to believe that these Dr. Seuss clouds are real? A lot of these are dust plumes, whatever, 
or seeded clouds from airplane chemical trails and stuff, dust trails, whatever. All right, let's finish. Um, when I was just making strides in my rehabilitation. In the arc of my life, every time I began to get up and succeed at dancing, something pushed me down. Like it did again. Then we got this COVID BS that's pushing everybody down. So whatever. I, da I dance every day anyway. Um, I question God and uh, am now embarrassed to admit I had hate towards it. Okay, that's where we were. <sighs> I decided I would not allow myself to end up in bed. If he wasn't going to help me, then I'd do it all on my own, in my own strength, with or without others' help. I did not care. I was not going to falter at the hand of this ruthless disease. I kept dancing. Some days were worse than others where my body ached and this was... Uh, I read all this already, didn't I? My kidneys are... Uh, 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 uh. Oh, here we go. Mitral valve. Uh, she would know if I... Sorry, guys. The last thing I wanted to do was burden her with my garbage. My heart was in the right place, not wanting her to worry, but she reacted intensely to my condition and it didn't always go well. Not to be mean to her or anything like that, it's just, whatever. These reactions caused a conflict between us and it grieved my heart. I told her I helped her because I cared. I actually said I loved her. And nothing weird, guys, it's like a sisterly love. If you're a Christian, you know what that, a real Christian, not some fake, following this fake, sick Satan pastor thing. And I uh, was taught to do the right thing by showing respect. She had some unspoken issue with my deep care for her and yelled at me. It wasn't too bad, you know, she was just, I don't know, she reacted to me telling her that I loved her. It seemed I had inadvertently pushed her buttons or innocently stumbled upon her sensitivities. Then again, she never shared with me about being sensitive to cancer or having issues with this, so I couldn't possibly be held for pushing, button pushing. Intention does matter and only my intention, and my only intention was to inform and help. For the time, I just let it go. There's other things that led up to it. The reason I even said anything about that is because I felt like she was being a little too hard on me during dance rehearsal. And I wasn't feeling good, you know? So I was like, mm -hmm. but whatever. She has a certain style. I don't know. It's all good now. <laughs> the semester was almost over and the dance concert nearing. It was all coming to an end soon. My partner and I, uh, attended an annual consortium with some of our fellow students. It included all the colleges in the LA area and Ventura too, most of them, uh, which students would perform their pieces. It was a great expression of community and became a short-term goal of mine to present work in this venue in the future. It was there I fell in love with the dance program from another college in Ventura, which is more Park College. I met two of my future mentors who are now the greatest friends and colleagues of mine. I inquired about their program found out they had an AA degree for dance, which I did not have, but I had a BFA, so that's kind of going backwards. And I put myself under their wings for the next two years, starting that summer, in which I was going to be fully immersed in my treatment. I chuckled at my ambition, <laughs> what was I thinking, and positive thinking. However, I had nothing to lose. My partner and I performed at our concert, and it went well, so I'm jumping back to um, the Bee Flies Community College thing. Okay, here, look. Page 94, 95. I just read this. Can you guys see this okay? It's hard to tell what's in focus. <laughs> My face looks so weird with this. It's um it's a zoom lens, so the edges have a little bit of curve, and there's all kinds of curves with lenses, right? So it curves here it, and see if I put my face like this, like this. I can make it look so different right now just by the angle and if I change the lighting, if it focuses automatically, it's gonna change it. And I am swollen right here. Really bad in here and here. Everybody is right now. It's the stuff in the dust in the sky, in the air. Thanks a lot, Q. What is your issue? So I'm gonna do something. That's why I'm standing up saying stuff, guys. <sighs> Days after the concert was performed, I had received preliminary test results. It was not good. It showed that cancer was spreading. I hoped there had been a mistake. It was going into my lymph nodes and all sorts of stuff. Guys, you all, unless you went to the cancer clinic I went to, you really don't understand cancer. 
You're shedding, baby. You have a lot of hair. You might want to shake it off. Um, it you, you don't get it. You're not gonna get it unless you understand what I understand and what didn't even come from me. I'm just passing it down. Um, what cancer really is is a toxicity issue. It's Parkinson's dust. And it accumulates in your organs and it was just spreading. You can clear it out if you know what you're doing. But it's a real pain in the butt. Anyway, I said goodbye to two of my instructors. Oh, yeah. Okay, the beef lie told me to remember what my nana had told me. I'd forgotten my I had forgotten myself then. And I had forgotten myself. Then recalled, there should be a comment there. Should, uh, then recalled Nana's words, live. The beef lie was never one to openly share her emotions in public unless deeply moved. She knew how con to conceal everything. Conceal, don't feel, put on a shawl. Gee. Wonder where they got all that from. You know, I used to wear my hair in pigtails and braids in my dance class studio and she had long, long blonde hair and she would do the one braid and wear it. I am so mad, okay. Yeah. Anna, that's one of my surnames, you know. Christoph, Christopher, spelled with a K. Um, we used to make jokes about that because at the time he would get mail and they would have to stop it at Christoph PH instead of the ER because there was not enough space for his name. They allowed, what is that, K R I S T O P H, eight letters. So they couldn't fit ten. That's usually like the amount it was. And so we even have like a mail from back then. I kept it as a joke because it's so funny. Christoph. And then she says, Christopher, in the movie. Hmm. Yeah, right. Look at our Twitter. Look at the Little Mermaid picture promo that we found. And a picture from my youth that was color time. And, yeah. There's something very, very wrong. Her communication was laced with hints and innuendos, sorry, I had to find my place, of compassion, but then there were past conflicts. It took me years to figure out this puzzle of apparent ambiguity. I knew that underneath the stone wall there was a flesh heart that desired to be understood, not someone like me. Maybe someday I would share with her what, that I understood, but it wasn't at this moment. We said goodbye for the summer months. Well, she's hearing this, and she read my the legitimate copy. Oh my god. Could you imagine? See this? I'm gonna pause for a minute and I'm gonna remember where I pause. Could you imagine? And it seems like Q likes to conquer and divide and play people against each other. They're little instigators. Little devils, if you ask me. And they make one person think one thing and another person think another thing. Two parties. And that's what starts wars and fights. Because everyone's thinking something different. And they play each other against each other. I'm starting to wise up to this crap. And you know, I might react at first because, you know, who doesn't when you hear something or say something? And I'm starting to say, wait a second, I know this person. They tried to do that with me and my brother recently. And I'm like, wait a second, my brother wouldn't do that. <laughs> my old, older, oldest brother, but younger than me. I don't have an older sibling, male, female, or anything in between. Let's just get that straight. My dad didn't go around boinking other women, okay? I know. I know for a fact. So, this crap has to stop. Okay, um, so here's the other thing. Um, they like to play each other against, play people against each other. And if you don't know to compare notes, and I was trying to, I was trying to compare notes with her the whole time, but they were telling her one thing to make her believe something about me that's, I don't know, something. And then they were telling me another thing in the school. Q henchmen, you know, third party is a Q. And I was like, that doesn't seem right, because I felt like I knew her. There was love there. 
you know what? Love always saves the day. Love always conquers and love always finds a way. So I am 1000% sure that we love each other, that she loves me, and she and I were just played against each other. And it's really tragic and horrible. And I wrote this book of truth so she would know that position and I made videos and she wisened up to it a lot. And uh, anyway, there's a problem some days, I'm just saying. But we know all better, we all know better now. And we're gonna be okay, everybody's gonna be okay. I'm gonna be okay, you're gonna be okay, we're gonna save the world, I don't know how we're gonna do that. Wait, let me drop my shoulders, if she's watching this, she'll be mad. It doesn't, why have my shoulders up today? It must be the stuff in the air, but it's a lot better. But, guys, okay. I like my little dancer body. I want it back. I don't like Q. I'm getting very mad at Q. Just saying. Next, I remember I left off. I thought. A lot about my Nana over the summer and how I missed her dearly. I would write journal entries and childishly hope that somehow she could sit alongside of me and read what I wrote. And this is one of those excerpts. And I put this on my Facebook page. If I could talk with you one last time. I miss your precious Christmas kisses. Oh, see that? That's like a tongue twister. It's really good if you're getting sprayed with that stuff that messes up your, your lips and hear really bad. It goes to your brain, right? To say that precious kiss precious Christmas kisses oh my god Chris that's a tongue twister isn't it can you say that baby huh? that's a tongue twister precious Christmas kisses try saying that precious, precious Christmas kisses see what I mean it's like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's really good to practice okay um, I miss your sweet laughter I miss your strength in God that you live daily before my eyes I miss your crazy antics she was like Lucy you know like from I love Lucy crazy gal I love her I miss your kindness I think I got some of that from her too <laughs> I'm goofy I miss your hugs that always made things better. I miss our prayer time together. I miss our late night movie watching. I miss our phone conversations. And if I could talk with you one last time, I would say, thank you that you never gave up, that you never gave up on praying for my soul to be saved, that you saw the beauty in me when I didn't, that you were never afraid to tell me the truth even when I didn't want to hear it, that you forgave me when I wasn't kind to you. Thank you that you showed me who God truly is. At least we had that time together. I know that your spirit visited me on your way to heaven and you saw why I couldn't be with you. I had to stay behind to be with another soul to show the love of God, the real God. This is what you taught me to do, the way you showed the love of God to me. I love you, Nana, Nona, Nana, depends what you wanna say. I do hope God lets you see me dancing. That'd be funny. I have a lot of questions about life after death. <laughs> I have a lot of questions about death and life. Time, tests, and money would prove that while cancer had returned and it advanced, but not as bad as it was first feared, a second and third battery of tests would bring conflicting results. Oh, you know what? There is something. I read a speech. Hold on. I read a speech for Bee Fly to give her an award. Where is that? Oh, that comes later. Okay. It was an amazing speech. I think I have it in here. I'm pretty sure I do. I was just thinking about it because of this little poem I wrote. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it had advanced, but not as bad as it. Oh, this first feared. Oh, excuse me. A second and third battery of tests would bring conflicting results and minor consolation, the fight continued. I also continued with expanding my duet into an ensemble piece at this new college in Ventura County, that is. It was a great experience, and I met many wonderful dancers who some currently dance.